Hello, my name is Stokes Baker, and today I'm going to show you how to make a relative frequency polygon using Microsoft Excel. There is a couple of different ways of doing this. The way I'm going to show you involves the Data Analysis Tool Pack. If you don't have it, you need to activate it. I have two populations I like to work with in this demonstration. I've called population A and B, and to make our polygon we're going to use Excel's histogram function and to make the frequency distribution table you need to know what is the largest value and the smallest value in your data set. I think the easiest way to do that is using the max and min command as I've just highlighted there. So in this case we want to know the maximum value of our two populations so we're going to say equals max and then we will click A and B since all the data is in column A and B and so we know our maximum value is 88.4 for the minimum essentially the same thing except we write min columns A and B right parentheses our smallest value is 32.72 okay the next thing we need to do is to make our groupings to our frequency distribution table and again our groupings have to include both the smallest values and the largest values. So in this case, we're going from 32 to 88. Uh, I'm going to start at, in this case, 0, and then do groupings of 5. To add the other values, we're going to use the autofill function of Excel. To use that, you highlight the two cells. That's your series. And then on this lower right-hand corner, there's the screen square. Grab, click, and hold, and drag it down until you've entered all your values. In this case, we're going to stop at 100. There we go. There's a values. And those are our, what I like to call the groupings. Excel likes to call bins. We are now going to use the data analysis tool packs histogram function to create our frequency distribution table. To do that, we're going to click data, data analysis, histogram. And then it asks us where our input range is. In this case, we're going to start with population A. Make sure you click the labels button since it's row one is our labels. Uh, then you can tell Excel where to put it. I like to put the output right next to the data table. And if I wanted to make a histogram, I would hit chart output. And make a frequency table and a corresponding histogram. When today we're going to do polygons, so I'm just going to delete the histogram. And now what we have here is our count data. Let's make that a little larger so you guys can see that. Excel just calls it frequency. I like to be more literal, like counts. And notice it repeated the values of our bins or groupings. So I just like to delete that. And I'm going to call this pop. pop a since this data crop is a, corresponds to population A and these are counts. Okay we're going to do the same analysis with population B data, data analysis, histogram, so in column A we're going to do column B we're going to still use the same values in our for our bins or groupings Okay, and then we'll put the output so it's next to, so population B is next to population A. This time we are not going to do the chart output, but I still am keeping the labels tagged when we do that. Oh, see, it started zero. That was a mistake. Uh, that meant Excel thought that was a label instead of a number. So I messed up. Let's fix that. Oh, since so it's label, I don't go from H3, I go to H2. So I'll the word groupings. There we go. And we'll make it a little bit larger so everybody can see that. And again, we're going to get rid of the word groupings since it's a repeat of our groupings. 
and where it says frequency, now we're going to call it population B. So we now have our data set for population A and population B. What we're going to do is convert these counts into relative frequencies. So I'm going to write relative frequency and I'm going to label these two columns A and B. And to do a frequency, we need to get the totals of our populations. Now Excel has this annoying thing of doing adding an extra column in it, which it calls more. I'm just going to delete that. And then replace the more with the word sums. And then we're going to do our sums of each column. Now, there's a couple of different ways of doing that. What I like to use is this tool right here. It's the auto sum wizard. So you click where you want your autos, your sum. In this case, it's going to be cell I24. You click the auto sum, and Excel says, are those the numbers you want to add up? And you go, yes, by hitting the enter button. Same thing. Next column, auto sum, enter. Now we need to convert these counts into relative frequencies. Again, there's a couple of different ways you can do that. Easiest way is to go equals, and then you get your your count divided by your total. Now we could do those looking all the time. So, and we're always using numbers in row 24. So we're going to put a dollar sign between the i and the 24. We use the autofill function. It will always refer back to row 24 for the denominator in the equation. Click that and we're going to click and drag up and sort of down this time. And there's our calculations. And notice I can grab this little green box, autofill and click it over. And now note we've done our calculations for both populations A and B. Now since the relative frequencies they should add up to one. Let's see if we, they do. And they do. So that's a pretty good indication we did our calculations correctly. Is that we are going to use the line graph function to make our polygon. That, again, it's more than a way of doing it. The way I do it is to highlight the data that you want on your y axis. Just highlight it there. Or go insert and these are different graphing functions we are going to use the line graph function which is this one right here gives you different options we're going to use this one where the lines can overlap and we actually show the data points right there okay that's you're starting to look like a polygon it's a good idea to add your labeling all different options I usually use layout 10 simply because it throws in everything including the kitchen sink and then at the end I delete what I don't want we need to change these numbers down here so instead of being one two three four we want these values that are in our bin so click any data point right click of your PC person or two finger click of your Mac person and we are going to do their select data just click series one we're going to go edit and what they are going to call it instead of series one what, what we're going to call this population a okay and instead of one two three four for the x-axis we are going to click that and then click our groupings or bins Right there, I noticed we went one from one, two, three, four to zero, five, ten, so on and so forth. Now to add our second graph, we're gonna hit we're gonna do an add series name. You can cl click the column with the series name or you can type it in by hand. And we're not gonna highlight the graph data that we want in our graph. And this, we're getting close. Okay. Now, in this case, we've added the kitchen sink, which are these up-down lines. Click and delete. Okay. 
one can also move the key here, expand that here. Uh, if you want to add a title, go to Chart Tools, Insert Elements, Chart Title right here above it. Now, I don't like the defaults that Excel uses. I don't like the gray lines, it's the black lines, the font's too small. So what I do is I just highlight and the whole graph like that, go to the home, make it a reasonable like font, like 12 point, and go from gray to black. Now to add a line here, you click the Y axis, right click or two finger click, format axis, and you can do all sorts of manipulations. In this case, we're going to hit the bucket. I'm going from a white line to a black line and make it one point. For the x axis, we do the same thing. Click the x axis labels, click that, right click or two finger click, select data, right finger click, two finger click, format axis. In this case, we're on, again, we're going to make the line black instead of gray. But in this case we also want to add tick marks. So we go instead of the bucket we're now going to these bars. There's this option called tick marks. Add minimum add crosshairs for the major tick marks if you want to do minor tick marks yourself at right here. Now we can label our axes. The x axis would be values of the values of x. And add units of measure units. Our y axis, the relative frequency, that's a unitless value. And we are done with our graph. Hope you found this helpful. Have a good day.